What is going on everybody? We are coming to you right after Chelsea lose 2-0 to Manchester City in their first Premier League match. It was a tough one. Chelsea just simply were not up to speed with Manchester City, a team that's been playing this formation, this style for years now. And Chelsea are a team that have been playing it for weeks now. And you could really see the the chasm in comfortability and comfortability in the difference of, of quality at all levels. Now Chelsea had some good moments. I thought the you know from like the 30th minute to like the 50th minute around, they were looking pretty good, creating some opportunities, but just a little too soon, a little too tall of a task too soon. I don't think this is a natural indictment on Chelsea at this point, um, but you know you have to take it for what it was. It wasn't good enough. City are a very good team. And you just kind of kind of put your hands up and say we move for the first match of the season. Um, as always, I want to thank our sponsor for this video, Simon Phillips from Cy Phillips Talks Chelsea. Simon has done an amazing job building an exceptional community where there's just a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff that he puts out. We put out um, as, as a platform um, videos like this one, match reviews, analysis, transfer news, source transfer news, might I add. Um, and it, it's just a great platform. So if you go ahead and click the link in the description below, you can get signed up today for Simon's Substack channel. So go ahead and do that now. Moving back to the game, let's just kind of move through the entire squad and kind of go through and just kind of rate how each group did their in their performance. I think goalkeeper, you can say that there were some negative moments in the buildup for sure. There was a couple of boneheaded mistakes, which you're just going to expect from Robert Sanchez. So if you put him out there, yes, you're going to get some excellent saves that are going to kind of prevent goals. But you're also going to give up some opportunities that are just going to lead to goals, right? And we saw it again today. Just some messy stuff in the buildup. Too reliant on putting it long. And just as a whole, Sanchez, I was not super impressed with. But how can I be impressed when you are disimpressed, unimpressed, when you're just, you know what you're going to get from the guy, right? So that's the goalkeepers. The back line, I thought, had a very lukewarm performance. I think the Holland goal was very frustrating. Um, in the beginning, there was just a general lack of awareness and spacing from Wesley Fofana and Levi Cole, a, a, a tandem of young center backs that don't have a lot of experience. And Bernardo Silva just took advantage of it, popped up right in between them, and then eventually got a pass onto Holland, who scored. And it just was too way too easy. We did see some brighter moments from Wesley Fofana defensively, as some of his instincts, you know, instincts were coming back, and some of his, you know, just overall products you know on the field was a little bit better Levi Cole I don't think had a very good game I thought it was okay you know some passes out of the back that were good but overall it was just was not really anything that was to you know hang your hat on Kukurea was a little interesting Kukurea got up and down that left hand wing it was definitely kind of a more of a prototypical back four I mean uh, Kukurella definitely had more defensive responsibility than Malo Gusto on the right side um, but pretty basic game from Kukurea no real true mistakes Malo Gusto had a problem and some problems in the buildup. Did not really offer too much on the wings. Really got cooked by Doku most of the game. I mean, Doku really took uh, Gusto to the woodshed today. It was not impressive from Malo Gusto, to say the least. Uh, midfield, I thought Romeo Lavia would be my man of the match. I thought he did a very nice job in the first 60 minutes that he was on, controlling some tempo, catching the ball in the half turn, making some passes. Did a very nice job defensively. Romeo Lavia was certainly the bright spot for me today. Um, Caicedo, I think he was just a little rash in some of his challenges, but what are you going to expect? I think Enzo Fernandez needs to seriously like figure it out. <laughs> I'm a little frustrated with Enzo because I think like he can do so many good things in a match and he can have so many key passes and switches of the play and not whatnot. But when he, if he's going to be given the license to get closer to the final third, he's got to start producing. Very slow sometimes with his thought, like his processing speed, right? Getting the ball on his foot, making a good touch, getting a shot. If he really wants to be a good player, he has to kind of settle that. Cole Palmer didn't really see much from him. He definitely moved into the inside of the field as the game got going, moved into more of that attacking eight position, was not playing a prototypical right winger, got involved a little bit more later. Nothing really to say. It's early yet this season, so I'm not to really beat up on him. Uh, Christopher Nkunku, I thought, had a very nice game playing out of position on the left wing. I think Chelsea, hindsight being 2020, would have liked to have a left winger over there, someone that can really 
get in behind, hold some width. I think they had some problems with City dropping back off so much and really getting into a low block. They couldn't, they didn't have the men up front to really f- finish anything. So that was kind of annoying. Neto came on, did a couple things, nothing really to say on him much more. Nicholas Jackson, kind of same old, same old, put one in the back of the net, was offsides, just mentally was not there at that point. Uh, Mark Yu came on, ran around a little bit. A um, couple other subs came on. Vega, Dewsbury Hall, not long enough for them to really make a, an impact, negative or positive. So overall, when you look player by player, it was a very expected result. City dominated. They're a very good team that has been playing their system for a very, very long time. Chelsea have a lot of moving pieces in and out, right? not playing a formation for very long you play against a team that has and that can manipulate you it's got to cause some problems so moving forward they have a match against Savret. they have a match against wolves coming up i'd like to see chelsea try to keep this same group of players playing as much as possible just simply for the fact that they need reps together they need serious live action reps in trying to figure out how the system works so i would hope there wouldn't be too many changes to the conference league roster on thursday Um, But we will see about that. I also think when you talk about just this team in general and you talk about some attacking signings that might come in, Jao Felix, Victor Osimhen, you can never have too much quality on this team. You look at these great teams like Man City, Real Madrid, you want to get to Arsenal, you want to get to that level, you got to have depth and quality depth. So I don't want to hear any more about we don't need Jao Felix, we don't need Victor Osimhen, we need them. We need as many good players that can come on because if a player isn't performing, if a player's not having a good game, you need to have somebody that's willing and able to come in and step up. And if you don't have that, you're going to be kind of screwed in a lot of games. And if injuries happen, you're going to be screwed. That's just kind of how I feel. But I'm not too up. I'm not too down on the performance. I think overall, Chelsea just need to basically just have more time on task. I want to see gradual improvement. I want to see them go to and you know take care of Savret. Really just beat him down. Really see what we're supposed to see at the end level. Then it's a step up against Wolves a few days later. And there's really only a two-day break in between those games. So now you know you're talking about squad depth too. I mean, that's critical. You're gonna need squad depth in those areas. So Guys, I don't think it's time to panic. I don't think it's a time to just jump off a cliff or whatever. I think it's a time to just let them let this situation kind of happen, right? Ha- let it, you know, let it build out to what it's going to be. Because right now, you can't really say one way or another that this is going to work, this isn't going to work. Let's give it, I think, th- two, three months before we can say, okay, you've had enough time on task. Why isn't this working or why is this working? So we lost to a better team today. There's nothing you can do. You got to hang your can't hang your head. You got a quick turnaround and a very important match coming up on Thursday. A very important match against on Sunday, which you need to start beating some of these lower level teams. And I think hopefully Chelsea will be able to do that with a little bit of a push off if you can take care of Savret on Thursday. So, as always, I want to thank you so much for joining in. We have um, a, at a match uh, watch along today. If you were in on it, thank you so much. If not, we hope to see you on the next one. We'll have some videos coming out this week talking about potential transfers that are going to come in. Maybe Joe Felix, maybe some awesome news, maybe a surprise move, maybe for a center back or something. Um, a couple other things, Raheem Sterling as well um, was left out of the squad. A note came out about him. It seems like he's being phased out. It feels like Chilwell's being phased out as well. See if there's any movement on that front. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at CFCDP1 for the latest information. You can go to Cy Phillips in the link in the description below and check it out. We will see you next time. Thank you.